Harvest Show, where faith makes a world of difference. Hi, everybody. Happy Monday. Hope you had a wonderful Mother's Day weekend. Do you know what your favorite Bible verses mean? Author and professor Eric Bargerhoff shares what verses meant when they were written and how we can still apply them today. Plus, our Middle East correspondent Brian Bush joins us later with the latest news from Israel. And the world news is coming up next. But first, here's Pastor Mark Lance. He has today's Motivational Minute. Hey everybody, it's Monday, and here's what I want you to remember as you charge into this week. Learn to let go of the things that you cannot change and focus only on the things that you can change. You know, it's amazing how much time we waste talking about things over which we have no control. We complain about the weather, we complain about our boss, we complain about our spouse, the economy. We even complain about our president. But guess what? You have control over absolutely none of those things or those people. So what's the point of talking about or thinking about things and people that you cannot change? How about you let go of those things? How about you start focusing on what you can change? And that is you, your attitude, your actions, your mindset, that is what is completely under your control. So on this Motivational Monday, take a moment, listen to yourself, analyze what you're saying, what you're thinking about, and let this be the day you let go of all the things, all the people that you can't control and start taking action on yourself because you are the only one under your control. Wherewithal shall a young man cleanse his way by taking heed to thy word. The C Broadcasting is dedicated to getting thousands of free Bibles into the hands of young people around the world this year. Will you help? Call 1-800-365-3732 today. Now on this Monday, May 15, 2017, here's what's happening in your world. North Korea is boasting of a successful weekend launch of a new type of medium long-range ballistic rocket that can carry a heavy nuclear warhead. Outsiders saw a significant technology jump with the test fire apparently firing higher and for a longer time period than any other such previous missile. A jubilant North Korean leader Kim Jong-un promised more nuclear and missile tests warning that his country's weapons could strike the U.S. mainland and Pacific holdings. The test is also an immediate challenge to South Korea's new president, Moon Jae-in, who expressed a desire to reach out to North Korea. The U.S. ambassador to the U.N. says the U.S. will continue to tighten the screws on the North Korean regime. Nikki Haley made these comments. A message to South Korea um, after the election. And so what we're going to do is continue to tighten the screws. He feels it. He absolutely feels it. And we're going to continue, whether it's sanctions, whether it's press statements, anything that we have to Doesn't do. Doesn't it all about the message it's sent? President Trump had previously expressed interest in speaking with Kim Jong-un under favorable conditions. But Sunday, the Trump administration seemed to throw cold water on the idea of talks with North Korea. British Prime Minister Theresa May rejects claims her government ignored warnings that the National Health Service was vulnerable to a possible cybersecurity attack. During a visit to Oxfordshire, May said warnings had been given. But this is not something that has focused on attacking the NHS here in the UK. 150 countries are affected. Europol say there are 200,000 victims across the world. Cybersecurity is an issue that uh, we need to address. That's why the government, when we came in, into government in 2010, put money into cybersecurity. Opposition Labor leader Jeremy Corbyn blamed the government cuts for exposing NHS services to the cyber attack, which hit computers around the world on Friday. UN Special Envoy for Syria, Stefan de Mistura, says the de escalation of violence in Syria cannot be sustained without a political horizon. In view of the fact that the Astana Memorandum has been signed by three major players and that we witnessed it and that the people of Syria and ourselves want a de-escalation in the conflict, we would like to be able to make sure that meanwhile 
they too are working in some form of thing. You spoke ahead of the upcoming intra-Syrian talks in Geneva. The sixth round of those talks begins tomorrow, running until the end of the week. And Emmanuel Macron was sworn in as the eighth president of the French Fifth Republic in a ceremony at Elysee Palace in Paris on Sunday. After receiving a warm welcome from the outgoing President Francois Hollande, Macron and Hollande held a closed-door meeting during which Macron was handed the codes to France's nuclear arsenal. The youngest president in French history, the 39-year-old Macron, claimed victory May 7th, beating far-right front national candidate Marine Le Pen by a wide margin. Coming up later, Brian Bush has the latest news from Israel. But next, pastor and biblical scholar Eric Bargerhoff exposes 17 verses that are most commonly taken out of context, and he explains why this matters. We'll talk with them right after this. You're watching Harvest. The Sea Proline. The gastrointestinal tract is one of the most fascinating systems in the human anatomy. It powers the body with energy by converting food into fuel. To keep your GI tract functioning strongly, order the new Restoration Pack by making healthy choices. For just $59.95, you get certified organic inulin, probiotic blend plus, liquid multigels, and mineral concentrate plus free shipping. To order, go online or call 1-800-965-2345. Your body will thank you. The Word of God has the power to transform broken lives, but only if we share it with those who don't know the good news. Each $5 you give will provide a Bible to one person. A gift of $5 provides one Bible, $25 sends five, and a gift of $180 provides a case of 36 Bibles to those in need. Pray about your gift and then call 1-800-365-3732 to give today. Well, everybody loves a good story, and as you know, the Bible has tons of them, but stories can often be misunderstood or taken out of context, even by well-intentioned people. Dr. Eric Bargerhoff, who has plenty of pastoral experiences, here to help set us straight about some of the most misused stories of the Bible. But first, Eric, I have to ask the skeptic's question, which is, how do I know I should trust your interpretation of these stories and not someone else's. Well, you should look at what Scripture teaches and, and actually uh, take an approach to Scripture that is uh, kind of a literal um, approach, unless it's quite obvious that there's some figurative language here. Um, it's the normal understanding of, of how you read something in its context and, and try to grasp the history, the background, all the things that are important that are uh, necessary for interpreting something of an ancient document in its own context. Well, and there are so many accessible versions of the Bible out mm -hmm. there now, everything from the King James to the NIV Correct. and everything in between. So how do we know which one that we should be reading? Because the interpretations seem to differ between these different ones. Well, the translations are, are different. Um, some of them are a little more um, modern day translations that are in language that we can understand. Mm -hmm. um, but the spirit behind the translation committees is wanting to try to grasp as best they can what it is the scripture is communicating in our terms. Because those, those Old Testament manuscripts were written in Hebrew and Aramaic and then right. the New Testament in Greek. So we have to bring it from that particular era of life into our own language and our own day and time here in a way that is keeping with the spirit and the principle behind what is taught and try to interpret it in the most literal way possible. And, and we had a story last week on Harvest that talked about a survey that said basically people have the most access they've ever had to the Bible, mm -hmm. and they're probably the least literate in the Bible mm -hmm. that they've ever been. Mm -hmm. Why is this? I think it's because it's not modeled and taught, you know, and I think that what we need to remind ourselves of, even as those of us who have served in pastoral ministry or who are called to preach and teach, that that we actually need to interpret this accurately because we speak for God. I mean, right. we, we essentially are, are communicating to our people what God has said in Scripture, and it's our deep desire to be as accurate uh, as possible so we can communicate these truths in a way that God's people can live faithfully. And I think that modeling how to interpret Scripture from the pulpit 
especially every Sunday morning, every Wednesday night, that teaching, that preaching, modeling, how to interpret it in its context is key to teaching people how they can do it as well. And of course, obviously the, the burden of families uh, teaching their children how to understand. So that faithful modeling of interpretation and application starts in the family and actually builds itself to the church where we hear it preached on Sundays every, every Sunday morning. Well, because you read the book of Acts, and obviously all those people were with Jesus, so mm -hmm. they've got a really clear, clear, or at least as clear as the disciples could have, mm -hmm. understanding of what Jesus was saying. Mm -hmm. As things get filtered down, it's almost like the old game of telephone that we used to play <laughs> as a kid. After a while, the story seems to get filtered out, and really that's what this book is all about. And the mission of those apostles was to unpack for us the teachings of Jesus, and they did that as they uh, communicated what the implications of the gospel were and what the gospel message was all about when they wrote the letters, when Paul and, and Peter and, and James and those other apostles wrote those letters in the New Testament. They're basically communicating for us. They were the spokespeople for Jesus after he had ascended back to heaven, communicating to us to the church, uh, to us the church, what really Jesus was teaching and how it should be applied to our life. Now, we're not going to break down every story in here because I realize I'm no dummy. You want people to buy the book. I get it. <laughs> but I do want to ask you about the first one you start with in mm -hmm. here. David and Goliath. Yeah. How can we miss? It was used in Hoosiers for crying out loud. You're a good Hoosier boy. <laughs> How can right. you say David and Goliath was misused? Well, David and Goliath is often misused because people will say, well, we need to, to overcome our fears by facing our giants. And they appeal to that story as an example of someone who had to overcome his fear and face the giant and to, to find victory. But when you look close at that story, uh, the story of David and Goliath shows us that David didn't really have any fear. Uh, when he approached um, the armies of Israel who were lined up against the Philistines, um, David was quite perturbed to see Israel shrinking back from this rather large giant of a man. And, and David asked the question, who is this uncircumcised Philistine that he defies the armies of the living God? So when he came up, he didn't have any fear. And, and, of course, Saul and his army would, uh, would, would shake as scared sheep and, and kind of uh, withdraw whenever Goliath came out to challenge them. Well, David had a life of living with scared sheep as mm -hmm. a shepherd boy. Sure. And so he, he was used to fighting off lions and bears, and he was aware of God's protective power. And he also knew that God's reputation, his character, uh, his nature was one where he could trust in him, and he knew full well from his own history with God that there was nothing to be afraid of. And so he stepped right up there and volunteered to take down the giant, and he did through faith. So there wasn't a lot of fear in David's heart at that point. So that's an understanding of the story as it was then. Mm -hmm. How do we apply that story to our present day lives? I think it has to do with the fact that we need to know who our God is, uh, understand his nature, his character, his promises for his people. And as we grasp those things, we ourselves build a, an assurance and a, a trust in God. You know, as God has revealed himself, he is trustworthy, he is faithful, he has proven himself over and over, and, and we stand firm in Christ by faith. And there, without that uh, assurance, we would be in our human nature rather fearful. In fact, we know that the scriptures teach, what, 365 times the Bible says, do not be afraid, right. right? So that's our natural tendency to be afraid. But when we know that we can stand with our God in confidence, in, in his comfort, in his power, in his strength, there's things in life that we should not fear because we know that our God is with us. Let me take one more for you. Jonah and the whale, probably mm -hmm. the one that most kids in Sunday school, that's probably the first story from the Bible or right. one of the first stories they hear. You got the big fish, he swallows Jonah, Jonah's in the belly of the whale. It's very appealing, especially for young listeners to that story, but... Boy, does this get butchered, doesn't it? Well, it's a, it's, a very, <laughs> it's a very endearing and miraculous story, and a lot of people have a hard time believing that uh, a man could get swallowed by a fish and survive. But then again, the Bible is a supernatural book. And, of course, God created the world out of nothing. Jesus was raised from the dead. So 
It's a book of supernatural things. Yeah, which, which one do you have bigger problem believing? <laughs> right. That Jesus so, raised from the dead right. after three days or Jonas so, survived in the belly of a so whale? So it's not hard to believe that uh, a big fish could swallow Jonah and have a little air pocket in there that would allow him to survive. But, but when I wrote about this story, Chuck, this was one of those stories that I think is not so much misused as much as the emphasis, the main point of it is kind of misplaced. And I think the, the story, the greatest miracle in this story is not Jonah being swallowed by a fish and surviving and going to preach. It's actually the repentance of the Ninevites who actually respond to Jonah's message. So Jonah, as we know, is the rebellious prophet. He's running away from God. Right. He doesn't want to have anything to do with his calling as a prophet because he thought that if he was to preach to the Ninevites that God's favor was no longer going to be on the Israelites. And so he wanted nothing to do with that calling, so he's running away. But the miracle of the story here is that God is a relentlessly pursuing God of grace who is even going to have grace and mercy on those who weren't his people who now will become his people through faith. So as we hear these stories, and we hear them interpreted on Sundays, here's what will happen in a lot of churches. It, is you go into the church and you hear the pastor talk, and then you sit there and think, I don't know if I agree with all of that. Mm. So what's the next step for somebody sitting in that congregation? Because none of us like confrontation. Very few of us want to go up to the pastor and say, wave our finger and right. say, you're wrong. Yeah, it's not, it's not a wise thing to actually call him out in public or, right. or to go start talking to your friends about how you didn't agree with what he said today. I think the wisest and most mature thing would be if you hear something that your pastor says that you're not quite sure is, is quite right or doesn't line up with what you understood the scripture to teach, it's probably wise to, to go meet with your pastor one-on-one -on -one and say, here's how I understood this story and here's how you communicated it. Help me understand where I might be going wrong, you know, because you may find out that he is right or she is right after all, you know, but we, we don't know that, right. you know, so. And, and let's face it, that's always the more mature way of handling any dispute right. is, is to go one-on-one -on -one and, and try to see it through the other person's eyes if you can. Right. Doesn't necessarily always work that way. We'd love to have you back to unpack a little bit more about right. this show. To connect with Eric and the book, The Most Misused Stories in the Bible, go to trinitycollege.edu. If you can't remember that, just go to our website, harvest-tv.com, and don't forget to like us for Facebook for exclusive content and interviews. When we return, Brian Bush gives us the latest from Israel. That's next here on Harvest. When Dr. Lester Summerall founded Let's See Broadcasting decades ago to tell hurting people about Jesus, he knew they would need prayer. So he opened the international prayer line. Today, tens of thousands of callers a month receive life-changing prayer from our dedicated volunteers. But we need your help to expand the work of this vital ministry. Won't you consider partnering with Prayer Line with a monthly gift of $25? Your donation will help us reach the world. Call today. Do you long to visit the Holy Land, but don't want to travel alone? On a Lassie tour to Israel, you're not alone. Our team of professionals has more than 50 years experience bringing Christians together in the fascinating land of the Bible. You and your new friends will worship together as you sail the Sea of Galilee, break bread in the Garden Tomb, and get baptized in the Jordan River, just like Jesus and the disciples did more than 2,000 years ago. What better way to experience the sights and sounds of ancient Jerusalem than with other believers from around the world? To join us for a life-changing trip to Israel, November 8th through 17th, 2017, go online to lasseetours.com or call 1-800-685-3732. Tell the operator to send you a free information packet today. But seats are limited, so don't wait. Call now. Just one visit to the Holy Land and your faith will never be the same. Everybody, hope you had a great weekend. The World Health Organization says a resurgence of a cholera outbreak in Yemen has killed at least 115 people in the past two weeks. 2,022 suspected cases of cholera 
and acute watery diarrhea uh, are reported uh, to have taken place over these last two weeks. Some 26,000 people have been affected since October by the outbreak. After two years of conflict in Yemen, the country's health system is near collapse. Just 15 miles off the coast of Libya, 484 migrants were rescued after their four separate rubber boats capsized in the Mediterranean Sea. The bodies of at least seven men were also recovered. More than 45,000 people have reached Italy during the last five months of this year, with 1,229 people known to have died trying to make the journey. Palestinians in the West Bank voted over the weekend in municipal elections. The results underscored the mistrust and division between Fatah in the West Bank and Hamas in the Gaza Strip. And with U.S. President Donald Trump coming here to the region shortly, it sends a disturbing undertone to any momentum towards steps in resolving the Israeli-Palestinian conflict. And lastly, here in Israel, things are gearing up for the per visit of President Donald Trump, both logistically and politically. 10,000 police are to secure the president's visit, whose itinerary is still not finalized, notably a visit to Yad Vashem. The National Holocaust Museum is not yet confirmed. The president will be going to Masada. Prime Minister Bibi Netanyahu reportedly fears a political ambush when he hosts President Trump. Mr. Netanyahu appears uneasy regarding the World Jewish Congress President Ronald Lauder's groundwork, which he has laid on behalf of the president. Friends, that's a wrap of the news. We're glad you're watching The Harvest Show, and it's going to continue right after this. Got Facebook? Follow The Harvest Show. Comment and share your opinions on current events. See new after the show guest interviews. Watch my updates and inspiration from Israel exclusively for Facebook. Facebook.com slash The Harvest Show. Like us today. You know, it only takes $6 to feed one of these children for a whole month. That's why we're asking you to become part of every child every day. These children have fled the horrors of war from South Sudan, but they're receiving a daily meal and they're receiving not just food, but the hope of a brighter future. Whatever it is that you can do, we need your help today because the children keep coming out of South Sudan and we need to feed them. We can't say to one, you can have lunch today, but sorry, no lunch for you. A reminder, if you're in need of prayer and who among us isn't, there are four ways that you can reach the Lassie Prayer Line. The easiest one may be to pick up the phone, 1-800-365-3732. I know what you're saying, but then I got to talk to somebody. <laughs> well, if you don't want to talk to somebody, you can put an email. Send it in at prayer at lassie.com. It'll get here lickety split. You can see what other people are praying about by going to the website worldharvest.com. Or you can put it in an old-fashioned letter, 61300 Ironwood Road, South Bend, Indiana. There you see the website talks about our prayer wall that we are putting up in the chapel. And we've been redoing that for quite some time. My friend Pastor Charles joins us here on the set. How's that coming along? Well, I think it's coming along pretty well, Chuck. Uh, we're getting a lot of pictures from different ones who are sending them in. But at the same time, we would love to have more. we got plenty of wall space. Okay, well, yeah. they can you can put uh, the old-fashioned prints in a letter and send them in, or they can email pictures now, right? They can actually email pictures, and we'll print them out. We'll okay. print them out, and then we'll cut them out, and then we'll put them on the wall. Very good. Well, yeah. a lot of people, I'm sure, with it being Mother's Day weekend, uh, maybe praying about mom or praying about relationships with mom, what kind of prayer requests are you bringing to us today? Uh, believe it or not, and, and uh, we're thinking because we have somewhat of an epidemic here in this particular region pertaining to drug usage. Oh, yeah. Uh, and it's pretty strong, but believe it or not, Chuck, is all over the country. Uh, for instance, we got Tracy in Indiana. Tracy says that my husband has got to stop. He, uh, he is addicted to gambling and is tearing us apart. Uh, and then we got Jan in Louisiana. Jan says that I am addicted to both drugs and alcohol. 
And she says, please pray with me that I come out of this. And then finally we got Dodie, Dodie in Georgia. Dodie says, I have been going through the motions for some time now, but I need to be free of this addiction and I'm ready. It's so. interesting that they use that phrase, I've been going through the motions. They know yeah. there's something wrong. They know right. there's That's something right. missing in their life. That's right. They may not be able to put their finger on what it is, mm -hmm. And obviously, those of us here at LaCie Broadcasting, we've got a pretty good idea of what it yeah, is. That's right. That's right, Chuck. After a while, you know, you just get hooked on being hooked. And you just continue to do it because it dulls the pain for a moment. But after that moment is over, the problems just multiply. Well, won't you certainly pray for our viewers out there who have who turned in these requests and have different ones of their own? Sure, sure. Father in heaven, we just thank you today, Lord God, that you've given us the power, Lord God, the authority, if you will, to both bind and to loose. And right now we exercise that power. We command that spirit of addiction, Lord God, that's plaguing your people, Lord, to loose them right now in the name of Jesus and come out of their minds, their wills and their emotions and let them go in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, we thank you today, Lord God, because we know that you're moving on their behalf for you told us in your word that you would never leave us or forsake us and you we know has our back and for that we thank you praise you and give you glory in Jesus name amen and amen yes. a reminder that we feel the best prescription for you is to read your Bible and if you want to put one in the hands of somebody else give us a call 1-800-365-3732 we'll see you tomorrow on another edition of Harvest When Jesus gave his great commission to go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature, he was not just speaking to his disciples, he was speaking to you and me. Through the outreaches of the Sea Broadcasting's television, shortwave radio, free Bible distribution, and prayer line, souls come to faith and are saved every day. As a financial partner with the Sea Broadcasting, you too will be investing into the lives of men, women, and children as we proclaim God's word around the world together. LaCie Broadcasting Partners in Faith make it possible for millions to hear the Word of God in over 190 countries. You can be a partner in faith with us for as little as a monthly gift of $25. Your gifts help LaCie Broadcasting bring life, hope, and love into a dark world. Call 1-800-365-3732 and tell the prayer operator you want to be a partner in faith. That's 1-800-365-3732. Be a part of the Great Commission. We know you're working daily to make healthy choices for your life and the life of your loved ones. MHC Life is here to help you with those choices by offering supplements and materials that maximize your personal health and total well-being. This may give the women in your life beauty from inside out. Our beauty pack will help her focus, sleep well, boost her heart health, and rejuvenate her skin. Order today for $49 and save $39 plus get free shipping. Visit MHCLife.com or call 1-800-965-2345. The Harvest Show is produced by LaCie Broadcasting and is viewer supported by people just like you. Thank you for inviting us into your home today.